Hello, I'm Stephen Coprins, Managing Partner of Coprins Law, LLC. And today's topic are some major changes proposed to the DOD's Mentor-Protege Program. The Department of Defense is proposing a major overhaul of the regulations governing its so-called pilot Mentor-Protege Program for small businesses. The proposed rule was published in the Federal Register on September 23, 2016. And it makes a number of important changes, including adding new eligibility criteria, placing limits on the amount of time a protege can participate in the program, adding new required elements to mentor protege agreements, and much more. The DOD's proposed rule responds to the 2016 National Defense Authorization Act, which called for the DOD to amend its mentor protege program. The proposed rule makes the following important changes. First, the purpose of the program has been uh, amended. The current DOD Mentor Protege Program regulations, which are found in an appendix to the DFARS, uh, describe the primary purpose of the program as being to provide incentives to major DOD contractors to assist protege firms. So the focus is on the large DOD prime contractors. The proposed rule switches the focus. It states that the primary purpose of the Mentor Protege Program is to enhance the capabilities of eligible small business concerns to perform as subcontractors under DOD contracts and other contracts and subcontracts. So the focus uh, shifting from helping uh, large prime contractors meet their subcontracting goals to helping small businesses subcontract with large primes. Uh, second, uh, the proposed rule would change uh, and expand the eligibility to be a mentor under the DOD's program. The proposed rule expands the universe of potential mentors. The current definition uh, primarily covers large businesses operating under at least one approved subcontracting plan negotiated with DOD or with another federal agency. In contrast, the proposed rule would allow any eligible large business to serve as a mentor, regardless of whether the large business is currently operating under an approved subcontracting plan. The proposed rule would also allow a small business to serve as mentor if it is approved by the DOD's Small Business Program Office. The proposed rule also affects the eligibility to be a protege. It expands the eligibility in certain ways. The current, the current rule requires that a protege be a small disadvantaged business, also known as an SDB, a woman-owned small business, a hub zone, or a service-disabled veteran-owned small business, or an eligible entity employing persons who are severely disabled. But the proposed rule expands this definition. It adds, keeps all those, uh, WSBs, uh, hub zones and the like, but it also adds an entity controlled and owned by an Indian tribe, an entity controlled by a Native Hawaiian organization, an entity controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals, which to me sounds a lot like SDBs, but perhaps there's a distinction there, and what the DOD uh, refers to as a, a non-traditional defense contractor, which is further defined as an entity that's not currently performing and has not performed any contract or subcontract for DOD that's subject to full coverage under the cost accounting standards for at least the one-year period preceding the solicitation of sources for, by DOD for the procurement of transaction. Long uh, definition there, but essentially it means that companies that aren't involved in larger DOD contracts or subcontracts can be, qualify uh, as protégés regardless of their small business or socioeconomic status. Uh, it also includes in the definition of protégé an entity that currently provides goods or services in the private sector that are critical to enhancing the capabilities of the defense supplier base and fulfilling key DOD needs. Uh, it isn't all good news for protégés, though, or those who want to be protégés under the DOD's program. The proposed rule adds two new restrictions on protégé eligibility. First, a protégé must be less than half of the size standard under its primary NAICS code to qualify. Now, in my view, this is a poor pro uh, policy choice. I think small is small, and I don't like the thought of restricting eligibility in this manner. Uh, second, a protege must not be owned or managed by individuals or entities that directly or indirectly have stock options or convertible securities in the mentor firm. So the uh, DOD doesn't want mentors essentially mentoring themselves. Uh, there are also new term limitations on proteges. Uh, in addition to limiting the universe of proteges in the ways I described, uh, the protege or the proposed rule limits the length of time a protege can participate in the DOD mentor protege program. Uh, the proposed rule specifies that a protege firm may not be a party to more than one DOD mentor protege agreement at a time. So just one, one active DOD mentor protege agreement per protege at a time um, and may only participate in the DOD's mentor protege program during the five-year period beginning on the date the protege firm 
enters into its first mentor-protege agreement. So a five-year total period that a protege can participate in the program. Uh, the proposed rule also addresses affiliation and control in ways that have not been addressed uh, in the current rule. The proposed rule requires the mentor-protege agreement, that's the written document that must be submitted to and approved by DOD, to contain seven separate uh, what the DOD calls assurances uh, regarding affiliation and control. These include a statement, for example, that the mentor firm does not share directly or indirectly with the protege firm ownership or management of the protege firm, and that the mentor firm doesn't have an agreement at the time of the mentor protege agreement to merge with the protege firm. Again, trying to prevent situations in which a mentor is uh, taking advantage of the mentor protege program to essentially mentor itself or mentor an obvious affiliate. Now, some of these seven requirements, uh, in my view, appear to go too far or perhaps misunderstand the SBA's rules. Uh, for example, uh, the proposed rule, the DOD proposed rule, requires the parties to certify that they haven't been parties to a joint venture agreement during the two-year period before entering the mentor-protege agreement. And the quote here is that unless such joint venture was approved by the SBA prior to making an offer on a contract. Now that's a problem because the SBA only approves joint venture agreements for 8A contracts. Uh, joint ventures for all other types of contracts, including small business set-asides, STVSB set-asides, hub zone set-asides, and WSB set-asides, are not pre-approved by SBA. SBA simply doesn't do that. So the DOD's proposal as written would appear to exclude parties who have joint ventured for these types of contracts, even under the SBA's new all-small mentor-protege program, which again, outside the 8A context, does not uh, permit or require the SBA to pre-approve joint venture agreements. Further, even under the SBA's 8A program, the SBA doesn't approve joint venture agreements prior to making an offer on the contract, which is what the DOD's proposed rule says. Instead, the SBA need only approve the joint venture before award of the contract. A big difference, bid date versus award date. So here's hoping the DOD takes a closer look at these portions of its proposal before they can become final. Speaking of joint ventures, the proposed rule uh, doesn't prevent DOD mentors and protégés from forming joint ventures, although it does not provide an exception from affiliation to allow them to do so. Um, it's important to note that a large mentor would only be able to joint venture with his protégé for set-aside contracts under the SBA's all-small mentor-protégé program or the 8A mentor-protégé program. The DOD program does provide an exception from affiliation for assistance provided by the mentor to the protege that continues under the proposed rule, but there is no joint venturing capacity as there is in the SBA's um, mentor-protege programs. Now the proposed rule does specify that DOD may not reimburse any fee to the mentor firm for services provided to the protege firm or for business development expenses incurred by the mentor firm under a contract awarded to the mentor firm while participating in a joint venture with the protege. So while joint ventures aren't prohibited, the mentor will not be paid uh, for its services involved in the joint venture. Uh, the new rule or proposed new rule does require certain progress reports. It expands on the current requirement. There is a requirement now in the, in the regulations for progress reports. Uh, the proposed rule expands on these requirements for the mentor's semi-annual progress reports to DOD. Uh, for example, the new rule requires the mentor to specify whether there were any loans to the protege or any joint ventures between the mentor and protege. So the theme here again uh, the uh, DOD looking for evidence of affiliation and control to a greater extent than required under the current regulations. And finally, name. Uh, the, the name of this program is the, is the Pilot Mentor Protege Program, the DOD Pilot Mentor Protege Program, and the proposed rule doesn't change that. Um, it's still a pri pilot program, uh, officially, but it was created by the 1991 National Defense Authorization Act. Now I'm speaking to you here uh, toward the end of 2016. Uh, so perhaps it's time for Congress to drop that, that pilot word uh, from the program's name. Now the SBA's new uh, All Small Mentor Protege Program, also known as the Universal Mentor Protege Program, has been getting all of the press recently. But even when that program is up and running over the next few months, uh, the DOD Mentor Protege Program will continue to offer a separate and viable way for mentors and protégés to come together. And it may be a special benefit to small businesses who are more interested in serving as DOD subcontractors than as small prime contractors themselves.